like Jay Brock. Cause I can score with a second on the clock. Okay, y'all, so we're about to jump into this last segment with Storm the Boys. Clap it up, make some noise. Woo! Come on now. Your first solo dance video came out July 21st, 2011. Looks like you're in a garage in front of a washing machine and dryer. Okay, but you was up in there getting That was down. My, my basement. Wow. Yes, that was our garage, my bad. That was basement. the garage. We turned it into a studio. Turn my brother, my brother, he he a battle rapper, so he had yeah. the studio in there, and I'll go in there and dance. Wow. Yeah. Wow, y'all made the most out of that. Oh, for sure. How many videos would you say that you did down there, dancing down there? Uh, I, I think we made like three or four. Everything else is like we was walking around and making mm. videos, you know? Mm. Yeah. Front, well, shout out to inside. that. Yeah. Shout out to that, man. You got to start somewhere now. Now, if y'all didn't know, she did take vocal lessons, and at one point in 2011, she was in the studio working on her song, The Motto. She said, I'm the effing queen. You don't get it, do you? Type of Dougie, everybody acting like a million. Downtown LA City, B, all these niggas acting like I'm on Twitter. I'm a Dougie every day. I'm a do it for the. <laughs> yes. Okay, look. Shut I up. heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it all. And if y'all didn't know, if y'all did not know, she completely loves Drake, you know what I'm saying, since his Degrassi show. She once saw a guy at a train station who looked like Drake, and, and she almost, she was like, wow, that's Drake, you know what I'm saying? And the song Over by Drake is what did it for you. Um, now, one day you're going to work with Drake, and I'm going to just go ahead on and manifest that. That would be cool. I, I thought about that a couple times. I was like, that would be cool. I mean, it's when people ask me my list, he's not on there, which is surprising. Why is that? I don't know. But I wouldn't be mad at it. I know you would love it. I think it's just these past couple albums just like didn't do it for me. Okay. I'm a really big okay. fan. So yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So I'll yeah. be uh, yeah. It's just, just yeah. I get yeah. really upset talking about it. Why? You don't don't get upset. Because it's like oh, he's what not, are we he's, doing right now? I think he's just like he knows he's already surpassed what he he wanted to do. Yeah. And he's such a big artist. It's kinda like he's just doing what he wanna do. Yeah. He just wanna make music and put it out. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like, okay, was well, that something common? Because we hear a lot of people make it to a certain level and they stop going hard. Do you recognize that about a lot of people? Yeah, I feel like people get like one hit wonders and they stop working or they get like one song that circulate the city and they yeah. think like that's just gonna carry it in for the rest of their life. It's just yeah. not happening. Yeah. Like you just need to keep going. You need to keep going. Make takes, make albums, make singles. Do what you gotta do. If you're not signed to a label, it's no reason why you're not putting out Music. I'm a music head. Well, duh, because mm -hmm. I dance, but I'm mm -hmm. very connected with a lot of artists. So mm -hmm. I always just be popping my shit because I'm like, there's no way you're not coming out with music right mm -hmm. now. Like, mm -hmm. just because this one song did it up for you in the city does not mean a thing. Like, you mm -hmm. need to keep going. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. See, a lot of people get stuck in on the moment. You feel me? But life is more than just the moment. You got a moment, you live in it, but now you got to work for the next going. moment. Come yeah. on now. You got to work for the next moment. But shout out to Drake because, I Love mean, he, he is one of our goats. He is definitely yes. one of our goats in this music thing. Now, recently you just discovered that Chuko's Justice Center in Inglewood is gone. Now, these Sick. take it back to the funky circle days. You know what I'm saying? The Young Queens Western Conference. You mm. know what I'm saying? Chuko's was a staple as a child. Take us to a memory that you have at Chuko, something that you'll never forget. Baby, we had um, the Tims versus Jordans up there. Mm -hmm. I think I was like 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And we used to be up in there cracking, okay? Like, mm -hmm. really functioning for real. Because I feel like the parties is not how the parties used to be when we was kids. Like, yeah, yeah, we used yeah. to be on the bus, busting into the house parties on yeah. Broadway, you yeah. know, on Hoover. Like, we used to really do it up. Yeah, so I think, the, like, just seeing that it, it shut down is crazy because, like, we went through the party phase and then we went through the dance phase. Like, we had all the dance events mm -hmm. there, all the functions there, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So when we went, we did a music video, but it was like a, a, a peer space behind it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hold on. True Girls is closed? Mm -hmm. Like, what? So we knew it was going to get shut down when we was there, but we didn't think it was going to happen that fast, you mm -hmm. know? But it, it's definitely something that holds a lot of weight. Yeah, it's a lot of things going down now that we grew up with that, that we just don't have anymore. And it's sad, but that's just the way of life. Yeah. Especially it, it, with gentrification. gentrification. Yeah, especially yeah. like anything close to that area anyway, Inglewood, you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, hey, but hey, Inglewood is a city I grew up in. Went to Crenshaw High School, but we got to give a huge shout out to Inglewood, man. Now, we got a shout out to Ebenezer, you know what I'm saying, from little old eight-year-old Storm at the Boys and Girls Club who had interest in dancing to everything we've discussed and around the world in the international Nike camp. Like, it all started there. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I was... 
I was little. I was eight when I went to the Boys and Girls Club. My mom used to just drop me off and be late to pick me up. Like, you mm-hmm. know, when they the, the staff used to be waiting outside because yeah. it's always like four kids that their yeah. parents ain't never on time. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then they wouldn't even come pick me up. Somebody else would come pick me up. No, oh, man. So yeah. I got close to somebody named B. Lynn, and he's actually in like four of my family functions. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just talking about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he was 18 years old. I was eight, and he mm-hmm. had work, was working there as a staff. And he mm-hmm. used to be dancing all around in the gym. Mm-hmm. So I used to be with him in the gym cleaning up. He used to be sea walking, clowning. I used to be up in there with him, oh, battling him, him, dancing with him all the time. And then when I turned 18, uh, I started working there. But yeah, when I was eight, I used to be right there at the door of the teen, the teen center. Like, bro, they in there cracking right now. Mm-hmm. Especially because around that time, like, E40 was like everybody. It was just so much was good that, music that, going out. Was that no? That wasn't the A area. That was something else. That was before. Yeah, that was before. Okay. But yeah. it was just like so much going on at that time. And I used to be at that door, like, bro, I gotta get in that hole. Like they're in there getting off. Mm-hmm. So I remember she used to be like, "Who at my door?" And then I'll be right there, like at the door, <laughs> looking, like trying to peek up in there every time a teen go in there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, let me get in there. They like it's only teenagers storm. You got to be 13 to be in mm-hmm. here. I'm like, no, just let me get in there. So then one day she was like, "Who at my door? Is that storm?" And then she walked up. She like, you know how to dance? And I was like, yeah. And she's <laughs> like, okay. I'm a, she's like, okay, come on. You can dance one time. And if you get off and everybody like you, you can be on the team. But you only can be here when we have dance class. And I'm like, say less. So I got off. And every day I was with the teens. Like, to the point where I didn't have to leave after dance class. Like, I, would just, I would just be with them. Like, yeah. just being bad. For real. Up and stuff. But yeah, I used to be up in there getting off. Mm. For Clap sure. it up for that, y'all. Shout out to Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Oh, yeah, for real. Shout out to Ebenezer. <laughs> For believing in you, you know what I'm saying? We all need people to believe in us at some point and open up that door. Facts. Uh, man, shout out to that because that's where it all started and look where you are now. At a, at a young age, was it something that you ever imagined? You know what I'm saying? Like doing everything that you've do- done, was that something that you would ever imagine? Mm-mm. Like um, I have, I do vision boards and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think about things I want to do. So I used to watch like Sean Paul music videos, 50 Cent, um, you know, Lil John, like all, all of them. I used to watch that stuff and like, oh, I want to be in those videos. Mm-hmm. But it, it's just something you just say, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, oh, I want to I want to be in the NFL one day. Like, Fresh. I want to play yeah. in the NBA one day. So mm-hmm. it's just like something you say because it's not like my family was talking to me like, oh, you know, you could do this or you could do that. It was just something I had on my own. So when I turned like, what, 15, 16, I'm like, I mean, it could be something. But then I think it was around like when I graduated high school and I mm-hmm. dropped out of college type thing. It was like, oh, you really want to do this? You could do this, you know? Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I did a Nike campaign like two months ago and I was telling my Nike rep, like, I said, look, you know, I used to be up at Nike. Uh, I used to take stuff from Nike to wear uh, to wear on my oh, football stuff. Wow, I was like, the homie, he used to, you know what I'm saying? We used to have the people, who, boosters and stuff. I used to have to buy my little Nike stuff from them. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, just to be a part of the squad and have my little Nike stuff on. So now I'm on campaigns. Like, I did one, what, two weeks ago? I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I'm really modeling. I'm really, yeah. you know, talking about my story with Nike, some, uh, mm-hmm. something that I would never have thought. So it's just... Things that I never would think. Super Bowl. Who, who's going? Who think? Who thinks of that? You know what I'm saying? That's see. That's what's crazy to me because it's like you can accomplish so much in this world. You mm-hmm. can do a whole bunch of things that you never thought that you can do, and that's God. You know what I'm saying? But you got to focus on whatever it is that you want to do. Because you can't, you can't pray to God. He always going to be there for you. But, but you, you gotta really got to put in the work, bro. Got to work. Like, you can't just be like, oh, I want to be a millionaire one day. Or I, I want that house over there. And it's like, okay, cool. What you going to do to get that house, though? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, every that day part, I'm yeah. thinking, me and my team, like, my, my friends, like, we all have something going on. I do mm-hmm. not play that. Mm-hmm. Like, my brothers, I'm like, okay, what y'all doing? Like, y'all want to work a regular job? Cool. How many days are you working out the week? What money are you saving? So if you do plan on, you know, you don't have your little girlfriend, cool, have a job. What you going to do? You have a kid. Okay, how you going to support that kid? You're going to have money. Mm-hmm. So we're going to keep a job around here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Fresh. Do y'all need to drive me around and get some money or something? You know what I'm saying? Like, just little things. Everybody has their own business going on. We all help each other. We all hit each other up like, oh, I got this going on. I got this. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can be a part of this, do this. So I think it's just about support, too, and having people around you that believe in you as well, mm-hmm. you know, and, and really do, though, because mm-hmm. people will really sit here and say they believe in you but that at the end of the day they really hate it and they really jealous of you yeah and, hey hey and hey that, okay and that's something people yeah. really don't Clap it up for that. it's yeah. hard bro people it's hard to really peep that though like it takes a minute sometimes it takes a long time for god to like show it to you but you, when you feel it act on that no yeah. matter how close the person is if you met them when you was two when you met them when you was in high school if you just met them and y'all came close like it really can be anybody you mm. know what i'm saying so i'd rather be alone and be with my six 
then you know what I'm saying have twenty around me. That, that's, that's weird. You know what yeah. I'm saying. So that's kind of just how I am. Hey man, you know, clap it up for that. Clap it up for that. That's real facts right there. Um, you want to be surrounded by the right people, and everybody not gonna be there for you. You know what I'm saying. Everybody not gonna be there to go through the beginnings with you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like they they don't see the vision. Yeah. They don't see the they don't see the worth. But yeah. then you work hard enough to where one day they see like, oh, that's what you was working. No, bro. On. Literally, I tell people this like Super Bowl. That's when niggas really was like, oh, let me stop playing. You really dance for real. Yeah. I'm like, what? I've been dancing since I was little, bro. Mm -hmm. Like we've been at what? I mean. Okay, so how many times you get that feedback and understood? I ain't talking to you. I ain't messing with you no more. Uh, <laughs> all the time. All the no, I'm yeah. saying from that experience when you saying people saw that and then oh yeah, they are. Oh, after that I just be like, okay, that's cool, bro. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying, that's cool. Like, mm -hmm. but then they still like you know hit me up like, oh, yeah. I see you did this. Like, for oh, sure, that's cool. cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool, cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, good looking. You know what I'm saying, you just mm -hmm. keep it short. You know what I'm saying, I'm not. I don't like to be a negative person, negative Nancy or none of that. But I, I stand on how I feel. Mm -hmm. I'm an Aries, so I, I'm real like blunt. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, like I'll walk up to you and be like, so what's up with you? Like you know what I'm saying, what's up? Like why you feel the way you feel? Tell me how. How you feel cool we don't need to be best friends we don't need to text every day but when i see you i'm gonna chop it i'm gonna ask you how you doing how your family doing we good solid mm -hmm. your business cool cool and mm -hmm. we're gonna keep it pushing there's no reason to hate you feel me yeah. too much hate in the world facts 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 and that that right there just brings you to a lower self when y'all are hating and you got jealousy and you feeling some type of way about somebody so i want to talk more about even family function mm -hmm. because this thing is all about family you put it you you put action into it and boom, family function is what it is. Now, when you get these people coming around and you feeling that energy about about storm, everybody's here for storm. Everybody's here putting on and doing everything you and doing everything that you represent. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, how accomplished do you feel when you see that taking place? Um, I think. Well, I'm more so like I like to have people connect. I think I'm the person that connects people. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Like, the first one was cool, the second one was great, the third one was great, I have 12 now. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting to see people like connect with each other that's never been able to. Like, mm -hmm. you know, have D Smoke, West Side Boogie, I didn't have Malcolm Mays come out, Kareem Grimes, mm -hmm. like, watch homie Quan. I yep. have the homies pull up and then the other little homies is like, wait, hold on, like, I follow him. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I do music, let me walk up to him, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, it's networking to yeah, me at the yeah. end of the day. Like, mm -hmm. we're family, we should be mm -hmm. able to link up at a park have food, eat, talk, do all of that together without even being a problem or, mm -hmm. oh, you, you, you a crib, you a blood, blah, blah, blah. like it, I didn't have two of the same hoods at the same place. The same time, you know yeah. what I'm saying? With no issues at all because mm -hmm. they know that I'm very cool and I'm, I'm a chill person, so I don't have no problems like that. And people fuck with me, so it's <laughs> like you already, you already know that I'm not even gonna give that type of vibe yeah. anywhere I'm at. I just want people to connect and vibe and do what they got to do yeah. together. You feel me? Man, shout out to that man. That vibe bringing a safe space that people can come to is always extremely important because nowadays everybody's about drama, drama, drama. We need something that we can come to safe. Man, y'all clap it up, make some noise for that, y'all. Now, Storm the Bars started a dance company named Throne with manager and CJ. You also dropped a 30 minute YouTube documentary. Y'all actually danced with B2K during their millennium tour at the forum in front of 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. So these big crowds are nothing that you are unfamiliar with. Yeah, no, I kind of like it though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like it. I like yeah. intimate crowds. I like big crowds. Mm -hmm. um, that was a blessing. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, my homie was driving for B2K's management or mm -hmm. one of them mm -hmm. um, for the weekend mm -hmm. of that weekend. And he was hearing the manager like, we need we need a dance group to come out mm -hmm. before uh, B2K. We need a dance for the, for the half thing. We need a dance. Mm -hmm. So he hit me. He like, Storm, I'm, I'm driving for so-and-so right now. I need a dance. I'm about to tell them about you mm -hmm. and what y'all got going on. So I'm like, shit, do what you got to do, nigga. Like, I'll make myself free that day. I'll tell them we can come up with something right now. Mm -hmm. So he told him and he hit me and then they ended up reaching out. And I was like, say less. They're like, boom, y'all opening it up. Whoop, whoop. Like, y'all got a routine. So we came up with the routine. And it was dope. I think it was cool. It definitely was a nostalgic moment. Um, a full 360. Because, you know, I, I grew up on You Got Served. You Got Served yeah. my favorite dance movie. Yeah. Like, that's my number one. I watch mm -hmm. it all the time. So the fact that we were able to do that routine with them that they did in the movie was super cool. Mm, yeah, shout out to that. Clap it up, make some noise for that. The one and only B2K. I don't know how many people, I mean, what people would have done to be able to get on that stage. 20 thousand people you know what i'm saying and the super bowl was even bigger than that do you shut the crowd out when you get up there and do your thing or can't do you see hear the nothing crowd? i yeah. see ants and ants and lights because like people got <laughs> their phones out 
and I, I don't see nothing. I'm blind already, mm -hmm. so I just don't see nothing. Yeah, so I just shut it out. Like, all mm -hmm. I hear is the music, and you know, what's the next step, what's the mm -hmm. next move type, but yeah. Shout out to that, y'all. Clap it up, make some noise for that. Now, we gonna wrap up Storm the Bars' 2022. It was real busy, okay? She got a partnership with Thread Beauty. The Super Bowl, of course. Behind the scenes, directing B Knows If You Ever video. Dancing and drinking on your TV with Liquid IV. Walking New York Fashion Week with Actively Black. I don't know if I'm gonna say this name right. Lee Lee Le Kelly 47 L O Cool uh, J. Like a Lele. Okay, yeah, she said it. L O Cool J music video shoot. Sierra Jump music video. Red carpet with Netflix and Fit 'Em. And she did two commercials. Clap it up for that, man. Clap it up for that. Storm. Storm has been busy. And Storm will continue to be busy. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you for taking the time to come on to Clap It Up LA and help us put this season finale on, man. We really appreciate you. Clap It Up, make some noise thank for you. Storm the Bars and all, that, <laughs> and all that she got going on. It's only up and it's stuck. And yeah. God bless all y'all for pulling up, man. We really thank appreciate y'all.